On the podcast today, we are going to dissect chapter 24 of the Tao Te Ching, which makes up the 24th episode of the 81 meditations on the Tao Te Ching. And as usual, Guyang will read Jia Fu Feng and Jane English's translation, and I will read Derek Lin's translation. Those who stand on tiptoe are not steady. Those who stride cannot maintain the pace. Those who put on a show are not enlightened. Those who are self-righteous are not respected. Those who boast achieve nothing. Those who brag will not endure. According to followers of the Tao, these are unnecessary food and baggage. They do not bring happiness. Therefore, followers of the Tao avoid them. Those who are on tiptoes cannot stand. Those who straddle cannot walk. Those who flaunt themselves are not clear. Those who presume themselves are not distinguished. Those who praise themselves have no merit. Those who boast about themselves do not last. Those with the Tao call such things leftover food or tumors. They despise them. Thus, those who possess the Tao do not engage in them. In this chapter, you see a distinction between those who are follow the way, the way of nature, are a Taoist and those who are following the way of society and, yes. and fall for egotism, which is actually promoted in modern society, particularly because modern society, let's be frank, is very perverted and promotes this sort of egotism of flaunting presumption, praise and boasting as something that is good that we should take on an individual level. Yes, it's completely unnatural and against the way of Tao, we mm. know that. And as you mentioned, it's a, the way of society, unfortunately, that we were living in. We, we don't have to, but we feel that we need to um, boast ourselves and brag ourselves and, you know, just to, you know, really boost your ego and make yourself... Uh, have this make yourself to have this false confidence in front of people and that's what's been actually promoted by society yeah and the first line really sums up everything right those who are on tiptoes cannot stand so we really see in society culture modern culture trying to influence individuals to stand out above the crowd and this is one of Lao Tzu's prime criticisms of particularly Confucian culture and the Warring States period of China, where people, you know, in the same as in modern day, want to be someone special, like a, a great scholar back in the day, maybe. I mean, culture back then wasn't as perverted as it is today, but they were, he was talking about very simple things like that. But in this day and age, we've got all sorts of things, right, where people are trying to stand out in front of the crowd, look at the hot mess, what social media is, where people will do anything for vanity metrics and so forth and so on. And so Lao Tzu criticized this. And as we've spoke about in previous chapters, the Taoist message is, is a one that focuses on rugged simplicity. Mm. So not about adding things to yourself. It's a recognition that how you were brought into this world, naturally how you are, yes. is naturally beautiful because mm. you belong to the world innately. You're mm. natural. You don't need to dye your hair pink or get a thousand tattoos, even though that there is inherently nothing wrong with that. But what's the motivation behind that? Mm. Are you trying to stand out? Is there mm. a sense of insecurity there that you haven't revealed? And that's what Lao is trying to point out. Yes, that's right. It's something we innately have... Uh, that we want to be a bit of an influencer, mm. right? Mm. From being an influencer, you have um, this kind of um, fake feeling of uh, power, I think. Again, I think it's a, it's a fake. It's not a genuine thing. It's uh, something, yeah, it's an artificial, artificially made. You have um, some sort of power over other people being an influencer, mm. right? Mm. That it keeps you, keeps your ego... Uh, tiptoe high and whatnot but like here it says first two lines that uh, um, those who stand on tiptoe are not steady those who stride cannot maintain the pace mm. so you cannot uh, be steady or maintain the pace that is to say that if you keep bragging about yourself it in the end it becomes a bit of a tiresome actually mm -hmm. it's very tired to uh, keep 
talking up about yourself mm-hmm. just to, for the sake of it and to have this uh, uh, disingenuous power f- in front of everyone. Mm. So in the end, it comes back on you. You become very tired and you, you, know, you become very exhausted. And that pace can be related to like keeping up with the Joneses, mm. right, within society. So we see culture, particularly modern culture, that are telling people or influencing people to be a certain way and then they're constantly changing their identity or their appearance or the way they think to appease whatever the culture says is acceptable. And it's really hard to keep up with when you think about it. And then there are those who are completely comfortable in their own skin, in their own being, and just are themselves and are authentic and genuine and don't fall for the the tricks and the pitfalls that culture promote. And that's what Lao Tzu is saying, like, because if you're trying to keep up with all of those, you wear yourself out. Yes. It's like you're chasing this artificial goal that is fairy gold. It never comes. And you ha- the, the point of the Tao Te Ching is humility, right? Is to come back into your nature and realize that you are fundamentally perfect as you are. You don't need to allow culture and society to impress what they think is good for you on yourself. And what happens, unfortunately, from that, as I mentioned briefly, was it only inculcates insecurity in the person. Yes. But those who are traditional Taoists are completely comfortable with who they are and are completely secure because they actually don't follow the status quo. Yes. They don't follow what is accepted within society. Yes. And that's what we have to do also as spiritual seekers, or if you are a Taoist, but spiritual seekers in general, because you're following the path of humility and you're comfortable with just who you are. You don't need to stand out. Exactly. You don't need to add things to yourself yes. to be special. It takes a lot out of you to be someone you're not innately, mm-hmm. right? That's why I think that you end up you wear yourself out and you become exhausted and tired because... Mm-hmm. Whatever you are chasing, that image of yourself that you uh, want to be, is actually not for you. Mm. Maybe it's not not it's not in you. Mm. Maybe mm. it's com- you are maybe completely uh, the opposite person than the image that you want to become. Right. Mm. That's why when once we start chasing that this a false idea, false image of ourselves, yeah, we become yeah ill. And we feel sick and we get exhausted, we uh, wear ourselves out and mm. whatnot. So it's, again, completely against our own nature, which is um, only harmful for all of us. And how did we have an image of ourselves? Yes. And see, this idea of the self-image that we have is, again, conditioned by the society and the culture that we're from, from the experiences that we've had. And you and I know this when we've taken people away from society for long periods of time, when we've lived, where we often live away from society for a long period of time, is when you're not influenced by all of the nonsense out there, all of the things that distract us, you start to see that that image begins to fade and disappear. And you don't really have a self image of yourself. Yes. And so when people have a self image, they've got to really uproot what its nature is. Like, how, how did you get this perspective in your mind that, or this image in your mind of what you want to be like? And then when you start to taper those layers back, you, you go, well, that was influenced actually by society because mm. if I am like that, then I will be accepted and, and I will gain social approval within society if I am this image I have in my yes. mind. And again, that self-image is, 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 is insecure. It's, a, it's developing in your mind because you lack the security to be who you truly are. And look, we all fight that, yes. right? Um, there's a great book on this. Zen, the Supreme Doctrine by Hubert Benoit. Mm. He, he really tackles uh, the the image that we have in our mind and ways to eliminate that image. Uh, and that's something that we need to deal with constantly because mm. once we have a self-image, then we will do anything to get to attain that image. That's right. And that's where these mm. uh, egotistical traits come in of flaunting presumption praise and boasting yes. and what we don't understand is that excessive pride always leads to failure mm. it never leads to success mm. and that's one of the important things in this chapter mm. 
Yeah, it's uh, in the end, it's very toxic, mm. isn't it? Mm. That's why um, society in general, there's so much toxicity to our psychology for, which is so in counter, um, counter-effective to our healthy psychology. Mm. And it only harms everyone. And it's, it, yeah, it's just a negative effect on everything and everyone. Exactly, exactly. Mm. And we'll do anything to show off, right? We'll do anything. What I like in Jaffa Feng Jane English's translation is they said self righteousness. And this is a really cool point, particularly in Taoism, because mm. what we see, particularly with the energy, say, of uh, social justice warriors or pe- people of this nature, they're very angry, but they also want to stay out, uh, stand out. It's a you know, constant virtue signaling look at what I'm doing and this and that. It was not, it's not the same energy as Martin Luther King. Yes. For example, where his energy is very peaceful and intelligent and articulated, where often the activist has a very angry energy about them. Yes. It's not it's not peaceful at all. And so the self righteousness that Lao Tzu is talking about is is that. It's because you're trying to stand out, you're trying to keep up again with the Joneses mm. of what the moral flavors of the time are. Right. And the moral flavors of the time are constantly changing. Exactly. Mm. It's, that's the nature of it. Mm. Yeah, again, being self righteous is mm, more often than not, people like to let others know that they're righteous. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, therefore, he a lot to says are not respected. Mm. Right? Yeah, we see that a lot, especially nowadays with the a lot of victim mentality going on around, mm. and you're trying to stand up for those uh, victims. Mm. I mean, the seemingly victims. I don't think they're mm. self-claimed victims. Self- right, let's say, yeah, yeah, yeah literally, I think, and they are uh, put certain symbols um, in their bags and badges and things like that. Mm, and slogans. And slogans, yes, yeah. as if um, they're doing the right thing. And I think, again, all I see is a, a great fear and insecurity within mm. that because mm. they don't feel comfortable or they don't feel confident to stand on their own feet and not get persuaded by this uh, status quo. Mm. Mm. But because they feel insecure, mm. so that they like to join this, uh, like you said, the cultural, moral fashion mm-hmm. of contemporary time, right? Mm-hmm. And they join that group, mm. and they, yeah, they speak out those slogans. They wear the certain clothes and mm. um, hair color and whatnot, mm. and tattoos and things like that. So to prove that they are part of this uh, moral group of people mm. which in a sense actually that's how much insecure they themselves are really mm. in the end and the irony is the paradox as what Lao Tzu alludes to is they become immoral yes in trying to mm. be moral yes the obvious uh, invariably the social justice warrior or the self-righteous person in general become immoral mm. they become almost exactly what they were fighting yes and and we, f- we see this all the time and again, it does come down to insecurity, as you said, like because a lot of them are trying to join the stat, join the status quo to, you know, to gain an upper hand on society. Yes. And as you mentioned with victim mentality, when again, which actually relates to this chapter beautifully, because when someone's playing the victim, what are they trying to do? They're trying to stand on the tippy toes. They're trying to stand out. Yeah. Look at me. Look at my problems and this and that. If Lao Tzu was alive, he would just be doing the face palm, <laughs> going, no, no, no. Like, own your life. Yes. And deal with it yes. as it is. Mm-hmm. Because we're all dealt different deck of cards in mm-hmm. life. And it's those who are genuine and authentic, which is most people in general, who just accept their life mm-hmm. and don't cry and whine about it. Yeah. And they get on with it. Mm-hmm. Of, of course, there's there's certain situations where you know th- there are terrible situations mm-hmm. that need to be addressed. Mm-hmm. But what we see a lot of the time with uh, self righteous people is they'll create anything up to play the victim according to whatever the moral flavors are of the time that culture and society are driving or corporations are driving. Yes. To destabilize society. Yeah. And Lao Tzu, he's 
very sharp you know mm. he sees this because this was happening also in confucius's time mm. in the confucian culture right. there was a lot of that going on particularly t- for confucius to implement his socio-political religious system in into society yes there were other counterintuitive ideologies and that floating around at the time yeah while out to sitting at the back going you are all damn fools yeah, yeah. just follow the way of nature and allow the world to present itself as that and be an adult and, and deal with it as an adult would deal with it in a genuine, authentic manner, mm. as opposed to crying and whining and playing the victim. And I mean, if you don't like a certain situation from Lao Tzu's perspective, he's just like, move on. Like, why, you know, why try and yes. engage with mm. a people or, or this and that who, are, who, are, who oppose you or, or condemn you? Yes. You know, on this podcast and on my channel, we mainly speak to people who are very serious about spirituality. And those well, people who are very ser- serious about spirituality are usually a real minority in the world. Yes. Unless you go to like India, for example. But uh, outside of India, mm-hmm. let's say, and maybe Southeast Asia, it's, it's pretty much uh, a minority view yeah. that people have. Mm. And so, you know, particularly with what we're talking about, some people don't understand it because they're so indoctrinated by mm. whatever the culture and the society and the corporations are telling you to believe. So when, when you come here with a, a counter perspective, yes, you know, people get very angry, as we see in the comments section mm. sometimes. Yeah, I think, um, again, what Lao Tzu and this uh, Tao Te Ching chapters always uh, reminding us is to have that simplicity, go back to the simplicity of nature, simplicity of uh, way of nature, but like you said, we are so conditioned by all this contemporary culture and society, what society is trying to driving and reinforcing us with a certain ideology is to only get us more confused and more complicated with the too many ideas, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So it's going to be completely opposite to simplicity, obviously. And again, the self-image we earlier talked about is also coming from that uh, com- com- complex society, complex um, ideology, the ideologies, full of ideologies that are fighting each other and uh, people get confused in the society and whatnot. So again, going back to the simple way of living and simple way of even thinking itself is actually very important to eliminate all these different opinions and ideas and um, self-images of ourselves. Right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, I could challenge anyone listening and watching right now, like come with Guyang and I to somewhere like Tiruvannamalai mm-hmm. just for one month and be in sadhana with us for one month and see what happens to your self-image. Yes. And if you want to go even further than that, stay with us for four months and see what happens. Yes. Or do it on your own mm. and do it without a phone, without internet, the way that you and I do it. Yes. And so what happens then? You just read, well, you just, you're just yourself. Mm. And then there's no story. Or you can't add to your story. That's right. Because you don't have an internet connection. You're not watching silly YouTube clips and yes. you're not on Facebook and this and that. And so you've got nothing to add to your story. And then the next minute the story starts to disappear. And then all that all that is left is for you to go and have a tea and sit mm. down and be quiet and That's listen right. to Om Namah Shivaya playing over the speakers on production or road. And this is your life. Yeah. How good. Oh, how good, you know. That's what that's how we choose to live. So there's nothing else there, there's nothing added to it. Yes. And, and that's the beauty of it. Mm. Once, you, once you stop adding to your story, the image disappears and then you are just who you are naturally. Yes, exactly. Without any need to be verified by society. Mm. You don't need the verification of the corporations and the society, the culture, your parents, your friends. You don't need the validation of that. Mm. Be naturally who you are. As you, as you did, you sighed. Because mm. it's a weight, right? It's, it's a... A pressure, an unnecessary anxiety that we all carry yeah. because of these expectations. Yes. But once you like knock it off your shoulders, mm. yeah, shanti, shanti, shanti. Again, the simple way of living gives us opportunity to strip off all the, the sheds of ego that we accumulated for so long from being in society for... Yeah, for a long time, and while we didn't even realize it, right? Mm. And when we do go back to this uh, simple way of living, we start realizing, 
uh, how we were actually so far away from what we truly are, right? Mm. So it's actually very important. So again, that's why the very last line that those those followers are therefore followers of the Tao, avoid them. Exactly. Because these are unnecessary food and baggage. Exactly. And they do not uh, bring happiness. They do, do, they do not. <laughs> they definitely, they we def- know it. They yes. definitely do not, yeah. yes. Yes, so therefore followers of the Tao, avoid them. Mm. Avoiding them being having a simple life, mm. uh, close to nature, mm. following the way of nature. Exactly. Being 100% comfortable with who you are, the mm. way you are. Yes. The way you were brought into the world as nature intended. Yes. A tree doesn't want to become a river because it can't. It's just a tree. Yes. And likewise, we are brought into this world how we are. Accept it. Mm-hmm. And, it and there's actually a beauty in accepting it. There's a real freedom in accepting it. Because once you accept it, then you're out of the hypnosis of what society is telling you you should be. Mm-hmm. You know, We go through education and everything like this where we can say, okay, education is all well and good for it serves a certain utility to have a functioning society. Yes, I agree. But then there's all of this nuance and all of this other back, all of this other garbage, as Derek says, on top that is training us to try and stand out. And then we end up tying ourselves in knots. Yes. And we don't find happiness that way. Yes. And the paradox is we become this person who, who, is in, who embodies the four signs of egotism, which is flaunting, presumption, praise, and boasting. And then we start doing that ourselves. And then the irony is the universe has got a good sense of humor. So as we always see throughout time, those who boast about themselves or flaunt their wealth or, or do this and that, there's a, there's a boomerang effect. Yes. You always see this. You see this in sport, right? You see particularly like if you watch mixed martial arts or something like this, you'll see particular fighters who brag about themselves, all this and this and that. And you think, okay, it, it's coming to you because, you know, no one accepts the law of nature. And so, and what usually happens, they might win a few fights and then next minute they go on a skid. Yeah, the universe has a certain sense of humor in that sense. Come Sometimes the boomerang effect becomes a little bit too obvious and a little bit too crucial sometimes so that you could not get away from it unless mm. you learn from learn from the situation or learn the lesson of your own behavior right yeah. so sometimes again like it's we experience firsthand actually in india mm, mm. Right, yeah. because a lot of people don't like India because of this reason as well. Actually, yeah. because yeah. in India, uh, like this uh, karmic, uh, karmic effect or result, it comes around so like right on your face mm-hmm. so quickly. Mm-hmm. Like it could be just someone uh, trying to, uh, you know, rip you off and things like that, or. Yeah, you just have bad experience with the just local people, or you just um, yeah have, have a like a experience with the train getting delayed like thirteen hours and things like that. It's just so the that world is so chaotic, so anything can happen. Therefore, this karmic cause and effect comes around so vividly, so quickly, so that. In the end of the day, you have to sit down and have to really deal with it. Mm-hmm. And you have to be able to deal with it. Otherwise, nothing's going to get done, really. Exactly. And what's really interesting about that karmic boomerang is what is it always doing? What is the universe or the Tao bringing us down to earth for, driving us towards? Humility and simplicity. Yes. The two core components of the Tao Te Ching keep being very simple mm-hmm. But the way you be very simple is to be very humble. And the universe is constantly always driving us towards that. Even these people who are self-righteous or who are out there fighting for all sorts of wayward causes, even they will experience this yes. in their own way. The difference between the Taoist and the ordinary person is the Taoists are willing to accept it, the lesson. 
And they obviously recognize it. Then they recognize it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's the that, first and foremost. That, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's the big one. Yeah. Recognizing it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Because often people are trying to control their experience and, and, and the, fighting what they are experiencing. And that boomerang effect comes back to them very strong, but they still can't see it. It's just a hitting lot them of in the, the head constantly, like coming back and, <laughs> and then they're just like still doing, trying doing, to doing, fight. doing, doing. Yep. No, nah, this can't be right. Why is the universe doing this to me? Well, first of all, you're not special. Yes. And so the universe is trying to teach you humility and simply, mm. and you only find that when you become simple and you take the low path, as opposed to trying to prop yourself up, prop yourself up over others and, yes. and thinking too much of yourself. Mm. And I think that's a real big point in this chapter is that mm. karmic effect that we need to learn, and we do learn, uh, particularly if you, like you said, if you do recognize it and. You know, we all do slip off the path sometimes, right? Like someone may give you some praise and then you're like, hmm, mm. hmm. <laughs> your shoulders get Feels relaxed. pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, oh, geez, maybe I am that good, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and then next minute, boom, like a, a boulder lands on your head and mm. you're dealing with some other problem, you know? Yes. And that's the beauty of the, the, the world, actually. Mm. And that's the beauty when you do follow the spiritual path if you're more attentive to your life, as you were saying, when you recognize these lessons, then a whole other world opens up. Yes. And as Joseph Campbell said, the universe opens doors where there were only walls. Yes. That's how you begin to live your life. Like things begin to happen, but you have to let go and you have to get away from this forgetting of the Tao as what these four signs of egotism do they 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 kind of you know separate you from the Tao because you're not living a simple life you're not humble and unfortunately because we do live in a perverted society a lot of people have forgot the Tao and as we spoke about in previous chapters as the society gets far more complex com and more complicated it's hard for people to remember because they yes. they are told that simplicity and humility are, are negative things Actually, you should always be on your phone. You should always be active. You should always be connected. You should always be trying to gain attention from other people. And Lao Tzu just, he just throws all this nonsense out the door and goes, gain attention from people is we a weakness. Mm. Uh, trying to uh, be the most popular in the, in the room is insecurity. Yes. I mean, he just throws it all on his head. Now, as you said, only the Taoists will accept that. Mm other people won't and that's where we're kind of at we need to be able to admit that uh, we have certain kind of fear within ourselves and instead of fighting it instead of not admitting it and also instead of avoiding uh, recognizing it we need to put the bring the light on it mm. we need to be able to deal with we need to be able to accept that kind of fear insecurity right mm. only then it can melt away. Only then it'll be dealt. If you keep avoiding, don't, if you don't want to admit, if you still think that you are all that, the image that you were thinking of, mm. then again, the boomerang effect mm. is going to come down quite hard on you sometimes. Mm. So only way out of it is to sit on it and dealing with it. And what is that karmic boomerang effect doing? It's trying to get you to eliminate that self-image yes because all of it is is knocking at your ego it's mm. it's pecking at your ego the boomerang's hitting you it's pecking at you going no no stop this stop this you're not going to attain this level you need to humble yourself okay keep trying if you want but i'm going to keep coming back doesn't matter how much you inflate this self-image in your mind the universe is trying to get you to eliminate it because only then can you become one with the Tao. Hmm. You can't be one with the Tao when you have a self-image of yourself being one with the Tao. <laughs> <laughs> no. You can only abide in it. Yes. But you've got to get rid of it. You've got to allow that karmic boomerang to affect your life in a way that you learn the lessons, you heed the message, and then you become one with the ultimate Tao. Yes. Hearing the message, I like it. Yeah, yes. That's mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, we hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time.